Okay, uh, hey everybody, this is Isaiah Diesel, and this is my first time playing live, so you guys got to be a little bit patient with us as we're working through some of this, but uh, we really want to thank you for joining us today, and we've got a very special guest, but first and foremost, Ray, evening now in the UK? Uh, evening, it is, it is Saturday, Saturday 6, 6 p.m., 6 p.m., 6 p.m., and we are joined by a very special guest, Mr. Jeremy Roberts. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Jeremy Roberts. You got it right. <laughs> and, uh, man, you've been doing a lot of these lately, Jeremy. I've, I've been looking at your... Uh, a lot of people want to talk to you. It's, in, it's incredible to be so popular. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Actually, I had a really good time uh, interviewing you the first time, so we look forward to a very spirited uh, conversation this time. But actually, I do want to hear one story before we get started, because you were on Xena, is that correct? Xena, yeah, a couple times, yeah. A couple times. So I saw one where, was, am I right about this? You went to work and you came back uh, looking like me with a shaved head, is that right? What happened? You're right. It didn't. It, it didn't come in as a script. It didn't really say, "Oh, you're gonna have your head shaved." But uh, so when you get there and you're you're walking over to meet everybody and you meet the wardrobe and have a seat and they're putting a little thing around your neck and what's up? Oh well. Say it. Yeah. So sort of kind of got used to it now. But now it's now it's this way just because I'm losing it. So yeah. Well, welcome to, to the clip. Welcome to the club. I didn't mind Dad. because, you know, as you can see, I looked really good. And it's, it's yeah, got a good absolutely. shape like yours. You've got a good head. Yeah. Well, I, I think he had some makeup and stuff going on, too. So that uh, that was very interesting. Actually, we are we are going to talk a little bit today about this, about uh, character acting and things like that. But uh, before we get started, we always like to talk. We always like to make some small talk. So we're going to hit you with a friendly fire round. Uh, are you ready for this again? No way. Okay, let's go. All right. Favorite, favorite WWF wrestler of all time? Oh, God. Uh, well, my mom was huge. She just watched it oh, like I it love was it. religion. I believes it. it completely. <laughs> Me too. Uh, hated it whenever I brought it up. She hated that I'd say it was fake. They plan it all. She'd just go into a big tizzy southern screaming, oh, you're, oh get out of the house. Get out. Get out. But then I, I, I did a, a marrying man, and I got to meet uh, Big John Stud. I mean, this is way back. Oh, okay. The guy's 6'8", yeah. 6'9". Six, six, and so I'd say Big John Stud, but I don't think Big people John. know him now. He's passed away a while back. All right. Uh, I'm of the 70s and the 60s era. We're wrestling Great. now. I, I don't watch it as much. I know, I know, I know. Great, Jeremy. Good, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Um, you too. We've got a, you've got a choice of one song now, and this song, um, it, it's going to play on a loop for the rest of your life. Okay, <laughs> so it's got to be, it's got to be really special. Um, what song is it going to be? Oh, um, I think it's uh, Nielsen Schmielsen. It's an album mm -hmm. Nielsen, Harry Nielsen did. It's called I Can't Live, I think is the name of it. I can't live if living is without you. Oh, that's a good one. That's I can't one. live. Oh, I'm, I've got a chill already. Great, great yeah, song. I like that. That's a good one. All right, here we Maybe go. Maybe not my rendition, uh, but. <laughs> since, since Gray is from the UK, we're going to stick with the UK one. But uh, who is your top three British bands of all time? Mine is Duran Duran, because they're the uh, best. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you're going to hate it. Beatles and Stones. I mean, first Beatles album I bought was uh, Got It Live, if you want it, from the Stones and Stones and the Beatles. And I probably say Queen. Queen? There you go. I'm, yeah, so I'm old school. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Great. Last, uh, last one. Uh, favorite, favorite action movie. Ooh. Terminator Two, right here. There's too many. I mean, 
I'm in Star Trek, so I'm going to say it. But is Star it Trek. is it an action? Yeah, it's action. Yeah. Action. Is it fantasy? Is it you science fantasy sci-fi? I, I I would suppose. But hey, that's there's plenty of action going on in there, so that's cool. <laughs> Love actually. So, no, just kidding. So, kidding. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> hey, that's so, a great film. Oh, so it I is. Want to see all right, so get and, and I'm huge English. I got uh, uh, Irish and English in me. I'm totally English. I thought I had Indian in me. My mother went through all this thing. She looked it up. She thought we had uh, a princess uh, back in the 1800s was related to us. We had the ancestry happen. It turned out I've got really? none, no Indian. Oh wow! But I've got a ton of, of English. So I'm an Anglo uh, big time. Gray was actually just over in Scotland for a job, and uh, that's actually a place I would love to see. But actually, yeah, we're going to start off here. Uh, we sent you the questions ahead of time, and I'm glad that uh, we got to talk about the hair thing because I, I do want to ask you about something, um, which is what do you think about method acting and have you ever had to do it? And for the lay person, method acting is whenever you really get immersed into a role. So, for example... Um, I think Tom Hanks, whenever he did Saving Private Ryan, he spent like five weeks in an actual boot camp. And then uh, when he did the Green Mile, he wouldn't break character. So e even the director came in and asked him to sit down on the electric chair. And he's like, no, that's inappropriate for a guard to be. So uh, to be sitting down on there. So he never broke the character. So uh, what are your thoughts on character acting? And uh, have you had to do any of that uh, in your in your time well the method method is what i learned in at the american conservatory theater mm -hmm. 30 or 40 years ago i mean mm -hmm. and uh you know it's just a matter of if most of the time when you act you if you can if you said it before you can say it again it just it comes mm -hmm. out naturally i've said that before you don't need mm -hmm. to put anything behind it but method it allows you to I go, so this is something as obvious as crying, you know, you can't just snap and cry. You have to think of something that makes you, and it may not have anything to do with the scene, but it, it allows you to pull up that emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just a lot harder than you think. But, uh, no, I can't imagine thinking anything. That seems ridiculously hard. Um, did, did you ever see the movie, The Man Who Knew Too Little? Uh, yes. Uh, was that uh, Billy Bob Thornton? No, not Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, the guy was in Ghostbusters. Uh, really funny dude. Always doing Murray? crazy stuff. Murray, 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 Murray. Okay. So he doesn't realize that he's in this. It's actually like a prolonged method acting that he doesn't realize that he's even involved and he gets involved with the CIA thing. And so this girl starts crying and he's like, that's incredible. How are you doing that? He's like, did you poke yourself in the eye? And he's like... <laughs> Yeah, and she's like she's freaking out because because she doesn't know what he's talking about. But uh, can you actually do that? Are you are, are you capable of doing that? Crying on cue, on demand. It's one of the hardest ones. It's the hardest one because the only thing that can get it from me is if I bring up something like losing a daughter, a child, or mm -hmm. something. Or if I you know, imagine that in your mind, then you can you can start to crack up. But. They don't ask uh, murderers and killers and drug addicts on TV to cry much. So. <laughs> Being that's what I ended up playing a lot. Touche, you're the bad guy. Uh, all right, Ray. And it was pretty easy to kill. I've done that before, so just uh, kidding. <laughs> yeah, so did you... So, okay, oh, here's another side question with that, too. Did you ever observe anybody doing any bizarre, uh, <laughs> any bizarre method acting? Well, uh, because I've heard some stories. Oh, my God, have I heard some stories. Uh, infamously, the Joker, I know you're into Batman, but Joker in The Last Suicide Squad, he was infamous because he was like, he was doing stuff like throwing dead pigs in the casting room and stuff. I mean, he was just doing some really bizarre stuff. <laughs> and obviously, the other Joker, which is Heath Ledger, he got a little bit carried away with the method acting. So... Uh, have you ever seen any witness any of that yourself? Oddly, no. Uh, you know, uh, the whole thing of staying in character the whole time might work if you're on the set 24 hours. You're the lead Joker. I mean, he, mm -hmm. you, you kind of need to be 
you can't just stop and go into the trailer and start watching, you know, Wonder Years or whatever you're watching. But that's my thing is it's usually a lot of TV. You're not running the whole film. You're you're in and you're out. You're you, so you've got to find something to do without completely going the other way. Oh, I'm Jeremy again. You you know, but you you sit in your trailer. You read. You know, it's uh, try not to go nuts. But I couldn't be a serial serial killer all the time. I would just go right. I'd lose it. Well, don't get ahead of the gun on that and one. These people, that okay. Is... Oh, good. I had a, like a, 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 my, a friends of mine that did a a, a Jodie Foster movie uh, where she it was actually a true story. She was raped in a bar by men. Uh, it, sh it was, shouldn't have happened, but they went through it. They ended up having to go through a lot of psychiatric mm -hmm. care afterward. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She it. was able to. <clears throat> this is not happening. So Jodie Foster. Uh, I, it kind of freaked me out. Is yeah, I don't want to. I didn't want to have a possibility that I would be talking to a doctor about, I have to mm -hmm. in a movie. Uh, I, All I, right. On air, uh, I got, and I, I, I just Jeremy, Jeremy. Do that. Great. So, Jeremy, can yes, I sir. just hit the reset button a minute? Obviously, you've you've um, you've done a podcast with us um, with, with uh, Diesel before. Um, just for the viewers that might not have seen that, could we just go over your um, how you got into acting? Um, and also, the second part of that question is, could you tell us wh where you think your life would have went had you not taken that path? And what was the first part of the question? I oh, sorry, how you got into acting in the first place. Um, obviously, some of the viewers may not have seen the other podcast, so you could just cover that. Oh, all right. Uh, okay, out of the Marine Corps, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started working at a club called the... Uh, 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 Lakeside Golf Club. It's down the block from Warner Brothers. My dad was working there as a cook. He got me on as a lifeguard. I started a lifeguard, and of course, everybody's passing here and there. And you know, I, I worked out on the ninth hole at a golf course uh, at the bar. So this is where I even thought of acting. I mean, there's John Wayne, there's Bob Hope, Bing Crosby. There's every star ever walking through there ordering wow. drinks, and I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, there's there's John Wayne. There's a oh, Talking John to the Duke, Wayne. and I grew up with these people anyway. So I, I, yeah. I, I still didn't know what to do. A friend asked me, "Look, I, I, a guy in this play we're doing is called Laugh In. It used to be a TV show called Laugh In. Zany things going on all the time, and uh, he broke his leg, and I need you to play an Indian store owner. And I, you know, I, I watched Frank Gorshin a lot. He did impressions, and in my country, you know, I, I had to play Indian." Shouldn't have been me, but I got up there and it was like I was saw God and accepted wow. him into my life. Whoa! I knew this is what I was going to do. I got up there. I said the first line. They laughed and I went, oh, and being very shy, it was amazing that I got on stage, but it helped me become get out of that shyness. So I went to Valley College in L.A. I started taking acting classes and my teacher there at the time told me, uh, you need to go to a conservatory because they teach you from nine in the morning till nine at night, dance, wow. theater, speech. So everything, you don't do anything but acting. And wow. So I said, I want to go, which one? He said, well, you got to apply to a lot of them. It's like acting. You don't get your first job. You dumb. I, no, no. I want to go to the best. So, so arrogant. What an idiot. He said the American conservatory theater. So I signed up. He saw doom all over this because, you know, he said, no, you're going to apply for the uh, Harvard School of this and, da, 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 and Pasadena School. And I went, this is the one you said to go to. So I I signed up. They gave me an audition date, and it was uh, St. Patrick's Day, which I thought was you know, good. Lucky here, a little Irish in me. And hmm. So I went there, and I turned out to be the uh, – I walked up to the guy signing us in, and he, he said, oh, well, they're going to remember you. And I said, why? Well, you're the last one in L.A. before they go off to Boston or and audition other people. I think they audition a couple thousand every year. Wow. And I said, oh, great. I feel very good now. <laughs> I'm, I'm not nervous. They're going to remember me. So I went in. I did it. And two weeks later, I get a letter from them, assuming it's uh, – turned me down because it was on April Fool's Day that I got it. 
Wow. It's not, this is not a funny joke. But <laughs> opened it up, got in. I could not believe it. I got into the best school. And uh, neither did the teacher. <laughs> she said, you have the ability. I just didn't think you would get it right away. And it's that's just not good the way it's been ever since. I mean, I didn't want to go sending 300 uh, pictures and resumes because, you know, uh, so I did a, a, a after the school, I did Shakespeare and things all over the country. And then I went to L.A. and sent, didn't want to send 300 resumes. And I knew the odds of you getting into business were really bad against me. But So I did a showcase. An agent saw me, brought me into their agent. I did that same scene for the rest of the agents. The next day, he said, fine, you're in. A week later, I did my first audition. I think it was Hooperman, John Ritter. Love that guy. John Ritter. Got it. And it's just, it's all I wanted to be as a guest star, a co-star, a, a, a character actor. I, didn't, I really didn't want to run the yeah. show because you're blamed if it stinks. <laughs> you're blamed. That So the, the other part of that question was, uh, if, you, if you weren't, if you wouldn't have done acting, what would have been the other thing that you would have done in your life? What would have been your fallback plan? Well, it was going to be a uh, architect because I, uh, or artist, I uh, had the ability to draw you as you're sitting there. I could really uh, in the Marine, in the Marine Corps, they would give me a little picture of their girlfriend in Nam or something. They say, and I draw it eight by 10 and it looked just like them. I had an ability. It's like a graphic artist can just do exactly what they see right next to him. I probably would have been an architect or an artist. All right. And uh, so I want to. Or a professional to thief and murderer. I don't know. That's funny. All right. So let's see the next question. Uh, thank you for that. We really appreciate that. Um, next question I have is uh, In your opinion, well, what do you think about why so many uh, stars like are, are have li mi lived miserable lives? And one of the <laughs> things I was telling I was telling uh, Gray about is because actually Gray was in another lifetime. Uh, his his fallback plan was being a Michael Jackson impersonator, and I sent him a video. Of Michael Jackson had a fantasy of going and shopping for food at a supermarket that was his fantasy because he couldn't go out in public you know so it seems like one of the drawbacks of being a celebrity a star is like yeah you have a lot of fame and money whatever but then it comes at the expense of a lot of times your marriage a, a lot of times um not being able to do stuff like go out in public without being swarmed by people so that's a pretty bad trade-off i mean in my opinion so it seems in our first talk, you got to have, like, in my opinion, you got to have the best of both worlds because you were able to do a lot of things that were uh, amazing, but at the same time, you also got to live a private life. So, can you give me just again your thoughts on why, if that maybe contributes at all to why uh, many celebrities uh, wind up committing suicide, or even people like Ben Affleck, you know, suffering with uh, depression and alcoholism, and of course, people like Robin Williams uh, committing suicide. And so, uh, yeah, would you mind filling us in? I wish I could fill you in on it. Yeah. Here's the answer. Oh, wow. Uh, and that's a lot. I think with me, it, it, I, I didn't have that such huge celebrity that uh, it, right. has, it had any effect except good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never got, it was no, it never got to my head so much. I mean, I have a friend or two, not as much a friend anymore that, very narcissistic and that's all they could think about it's all they could think about was getting famous and then 20 30 years ago i read a uh you know, surveys they gave to kids teenagers what you want to be when you grow up and over 50 it was 80 percent of it the main answer was to be rich and famous hmm. rich and famous i mean fame that was that was so and now fame is such a something that everybody wants they every it's social media any any mm -hmm, mm -hmm, tiny mm -hmm. bit of everybody was looking at me and i, I think whoop pulled out my ears but 
So I think that might affect him. And I don't know. I, I, I always wonder well, why. Jeremy, I always well, get well, angry when I see why is it everybody? Well, you're so rich. You have right. everything. Well, why are you having a problem? I'm not any mm-hmm. different than you. And, you know, then everybody can have problems. But I just think if you have all your bills paid, you know, suck it up. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? Like That's sure. the hardest thing in the world is I know, I know. paying your bills. And you're, and, and you'll be given swag bags. You go to an award, you get an award, and they give you hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're feeding it. Right. So I but, don't feel any actually, pity for them. Right. I, I understand that. But actually, I saw another interview when you were talking to another gentleman who had interviewed, I guess, through Comic-Con or whatever. He had interviewed a lot of different uh, celebrities. And he was like, the thing that they like about me is that I treat them like they're a regular person. And I'm thinking, well, they are regular people. They're just regular people who have this as a job. They have people putting them on pedestals, but these people have gas. They have to wake up and eat. They bleed. They have colds, just like anybody else. And I think sometimes uh, we, they think people can tend to think about them as like they're, they're flawless. They're, they put them too high on a pedestal. And then whenever they can't live up to that, or uh, like take like for example like Britney Spears, you know, she started to experience some addiction yeah. and wild living. And I'm talking a lot of these people like Lindsay Lohan, uh, and I hate to name drop to to bash. This is not to bash them, but it just it's a hard it's a hard life to live if you are you have all these expectations and people aren't giving you the freedom that maybe the, you know you would just afford just a Joe Blow like me. So um, do you think that could contribute at all? Yeah, those are, God, I don't know if there's an answer to how to handle mm-hmm. fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just, I like your response. To I guess the, all the people that I've met or worked with and that are, are huge, the Duvalls, the Tommy Lee Jones, they don't, uh-huh. maybe you just don't know their private life. It's all messed up uh-huh. or not, or, but uh-huh. they seem perfectly happy and uh-huh. all right with everything. That's certain. And then others. But that, like I said, society now, everybody in the world wants any, any, any minutia of fame. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. What's what's lacking in society? It's a pretty big trade, though, isn't it, for your freedom? I mean, obviously, you know, freedom is, is one of the most important things to, to everybody. Mm-hmm. And, you know, swapping that for... And millions of pounds, it, it just doesn't really seem like a, a very good trade to me. Wait, pounds? I thought you guys use um, kilograms in the UK. <laughs> no, sorry, that's a bad joke. Uh, I love talking to Earl Grey. I love talking to Earl Grey. I just Earl Grey. Well, that's great. I love that name. Is it uh, fake? Uh, Gray. Are you actually Earl Grey? No. He's British, oh, so he okay. likes to drink the tea. Yeah, you know, he's a he's a tea fan. All about All right, the tea, great, mate. All about the tea. Great. So for the viewers, uh, his, tea does his not. His real mean name tea is Tiffany. In the UK, <laughs> tea means a meal. It means like dinner. So that's they got things backwards. In fact, when they flush the toilet, it goes the wrong way. So yeah, I think they were here first, though. I don't remember. All right, great. <laughs> well, we talk. We t- you, you said about Tommy Lee Jones and. Obviously, you've worked with um, people like Jim Carrey, um, Whoopi Goldberg. Um, you starred on Star Trek as well. Um, have you been to any big parties with these guys? Any rap parties? And have you have any stories that stand out? Actually, no. I, I I did go to one that I wasn't involved in. I think it was Pink Cadillac. It's, it was a Clint Eastwood, mm-hmm. but uh, and he went. He, he arrived for like. A minute and then he was gone because you know it was a fine party and he arrived and it was like thousands appeared and it just he just he can't go to any more parties like that because yeah everybody wants to see clint eastwood you know right right but no they they're they're pretty tame and i've not i've been to a lot of them but I just when you go to them, I haven't been in in a while, in ten years or so. But you know, first starting and all, you're you're there in a room full of monster stars. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
I'm, I'm white and like, oh, how do I not act like an idiot? Right. I know I was right. in the movie, but yeah, this, this, so I just don't want to be like a fool in front of them all. Right. It's just, but then it, you, after a while, you just sit there and, and you're going, well, they're just like everybody else. They're talking to me yeah. and you're, you're, mm -hmm. I'm sitting. And like I mentioned this, I probably before one of my childhood idol was uh, uh, Frank Gorshin. And uh, I, who would have thought you would ever? I did it recently. Okay. I recently did another one, uh, one of these uh, podcasts where Nicholas Meyer, the director of Star Trek Six, was there. And I was trying right, I I was explaining that. something on the Zoom. Well, right. And I said that I was able to sit there in my backyard, having met Frank Gorshin after 40, 50 years. Here's my childhood idol is dating my mother in law. And he's sitting on the phone talking. I'm dropping names. It's just because it was so mind blowing to me. I'm having a drink, urban opposite this chain smoking idol of mine talking to Tony Bennett about his wedding That's coming up crazy. to my mother in law. And he's going to be my father in law. And That's so Nicholas crazy. Meyer didn't. He said, What you did is you ended up meeting your childhood idol. Mm -hmm. And that, how many people, I got chills, how many people can say that with, with regularity? I end up meeting mm -hmm. all these people. It's, mm -hmm. Which is phenomenal. Like he's sitting yeah. in my backyard. Right. The Riddler. I know. So I didn't answer okay. any question. I do that a lot. No, thank you. Thank you. That's uh I would love to be a fly in the wall, like on one of those things. Not that you know, personally, I really don't care. Like I, I have met met fam some famous people uh myself, but uh at the end of the day, as I said. They're just people. I mean, actually, one time my girlfriend was visiting me in Santa Barbara and Sigourney Weaver actually was on the plane with her. And so I made her this big old welcome to California sign. And so Sigourney Weaver came out and I asked her for an autograph to sign it for my girlfriend. She signed it. And, you know, she's really nice, a lot prettier in person, I must say. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just just a normal person. It's like if I met a doctor or a, a, a student, uh, it's the same exact person. So, um, you know, just maybe a different stage of life. So, uh, but I, it would just be interesting to see the interactions, kind of like uh, what's going on, uh, whether there's deals, they're talking about whatever. That would just be fascinating. But uh, so I do oh, have hearing, hearing stars talk about stuff. Sorry. Hearing hmm, right. stars, it just, you're, you're like, oh, well, while they're talking about shopping. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what I expected, but. That's right, like right, what I would right. talk about. And then you exactly, get over it and exactly. you realize, hey, they're normal. Unless yeah, they're exactly. a little. Right. And there's a few of them. We've recently have come across one of those through this channel, actually. I think I told you about the Squid Game. Yeah, exactly. Just Okay, but here we go. Next question. So first of all, I have done a little bit of uh, not acting, but extra work here in South Korea on some films. And one of the greatest things was I saw probably for like eight hours, I was just sitting down there with, I mean, and, and you know this, they take care of you, man. They, anything you want, they just have it over there for you, right? I, I mean, I know you know this, but uh, they, they have all the drinks, whatever, food. And and then they, they, out of nowhere, yeah, and out of nowhere, the director's like, oh, okay, I did you, whatever. And so I go into there, but what um that was just for a day or two but what's the longest you've ever had to sit in a trailer one and then two how do you like keep big like do you do you, do you, do you st would you like stay in the sidelines and watch what's going on or do you literally just stay in there or like what, what do you no, i'm all over the place because you get bored and i i can't be that person right. all the time I mean, you, you just try to keep it somewhere. Like, here's me, and here's the character. I eh, somewhere in here. I try to stay involved, and then I'll go on the set. I'll walk around. You're looking for something to do. You read. Mm -hmm. You watch TV. You got. It sets you up like you wouldn't believe. You try not to I go know, to that right. table that's just just loaded with food and candies, and <clears throat> but you're thinking of your weight or your something else. Right. So, now, and then, of course, uh, you get behind the camera you're trying to, well, maybe I'll direct one day. I'll, I'll listen to him. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Mm, Never do that. Too hard. And then I get to see the people. And I go, how can they come back behind the camera and watch themselves? 
don't they want to quit? They stink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that I think they stink, mm -hmm. but they think maybe like I did. Mm -hmm. I couldn't watch myself mm -hmm. for years. I've seen mm -hmm. things now because we're needing to get more pictures or uh, like these Comic-Con signings. And because like I said, I do a lot of guest star stuff. I'm not known for one, the small lots. So she's taking shots off of every show and I'm having to see these and going, Oh, that's why I didn't watch it. I, I just don't have a good opinion of my own acting and maybe I'm right, but they kept hiring me. So I never quit. Right. But uh, what's the longest you ever had to sit still without doing anything? Oh, uh, I think it was the mask. Uh, two or three, three weeks? weeks in a trailer, just going and wondering if I'm ever going to get out and then finding out that the director had made a mistake and they'd shot me out of a scene so they couldn't put me in like the rest of the movie they wanted to because he liked my white hair. Mm -hmm. And he, liked, he wanted to see that in the scenes. But he ended up realizing he had already shot me out of this. So like I was the guy that threw him out of the Bo Coco Bongo yeah. Club. So, so I ended up sitting there for three weeks and listening to Oh, if I can remember the comedian's name, he he had a, a running amount of extra girls to come out of his trailer, which I thought, why don't I do that? But I didn't have the, the nerve. Yeah. And it wasn't the comedian um, Jim Carrey. No, the I, other uh, guy, I, I think his friend in there, uh, that guy was pretty funny, actually. But, um, but the other thing, yeah. the other thing that I wanted to. And an impressionist, too, like Frank Gorshin. Yeah, he, he, that guy was actually really funny. But, um, Good Shatner. <laughs> but, but obviously, you're just sitting there and getting paid the whole time, right? Yeah. Or strange. Did, I didn't mind that. That was good. Oh, God. It's, honestly, from the first time I talked to you, I'm like, that seems like the most ideal job. Like, I would prefer doing that way over being like a celebrity. Be, uh, because if, again, if you can't, if you're sacrificing money for uh, not being able to like go to Burger King, whatever, like that's that's hardly a trade off. So, uh, Greg, it's over like um, it's it's a daily rate. Am I right? Is it daily rate? It's depending it's on the hour television, it's uh, you're a day rate. You're a day rate if you're a day player. If you're only there for one day, your agent has worked out whatever your rate is. And if you've worked for years, you, you slowly get more and more. They mm -hmm. are not going to give you the day rate. You'll get something higher. And if it's a movie you're, or even a TV show, they can do a week rate. Um, and then it goes up as your fame increases, I guess. Your work quotient. That's something your agent knows. But it was a great thing because that, that, that mask, although I'm on it instantly and that's it, all that time on it, I got my first residual. I probably said this before. My first residual, it was uh, for the mask, and it was five figures. It was huge. I mean, I don't see that kind of stuff from something that's re-airing. Are you kidding? And But then I, I looked at the, after they took out 40 or 50 percent, the government, and I, I, like oh. I told the story, I ended up writing Clinton at the time and complaining that I don't remember seeing him in the movie at all. Well, why am I giving it all to you? But that took me off. Uh, I had a top secret list I was on for the Marine Corps, and they took me off that right around then. I don't know if that's wow. why. Wow, but that that's a funny that's a funny story. I thought but, it was funny. I was riding the president. I'm that that's pissed hilarious. off about my taxes. That's hilarious. So actually, two things: one, what was the residual for, and two, what was the longest you ever spent on a set? Oh, it was the mask. That's that's what that residual was for. It was my first big one. They give you like now a lump get, from t wow. Well, it, it keeps coming. It's like these the best shows. If you're in uh, popular shows, TV and film, then uh, I'm I have residuals now from something I did 30 years ago. That's still coming wow. in. Wow. It's a it's wow. it's nice. I'm but, assuming um, that you kind of sorry, Jeremy. I'm assuming you kind of knew pretty quickly after um, finding out that you were working with Jim Carrey, that that was going to be a big payday, right? I didn't know. I actually didn't think about that. 
it was just that I guess when you're younger, you just glad you got it. I don't fine if I'm a day or in it. But I mean, after he talks to you once and laughing your head off, I go, hey, you don't have to pay me. That was I <laughs> wow. went on the set every day hoping I could see him, and hoping <laughs> wow. he would be as usual. Did you spend on, much time with him? Was. Uh, I tr you, you, I want to say I tried. It was just because I happened to be near it, and I mm -hmm. sometimes think I'm funny. I don't, or people <laughs> say you're 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 quick witted, and but uh, you can't stand up to next to him or Robin Williams or yeah, I don't I you know uh, Jonathan Winters. Have you ever heard of him, Jonathan Winters? Oh yeah. oh yeah, he's back in the '60s, '70s. He had his own show. He was the first person who could take an object and you know, sudden the whole thing is hilariously funny and he's wearing a hat the man was amazing it, uh, so jeremy that in so travel were... is why i did it. i was an actor right to travel that must have been amazing to meet stars and go somewhere else right because most people they, they most people always have that idea they want to do the traveling but it, it's always finances or whatever so if you're giving someone else to pay for that that's that in itself is like pretty much <laughs> worth doing it. But um, w what did you miss the most um, in your decade away from the screen? Wow. There's one I, thing. Nothing. I, I, I was, I, I, it's a bummer to say, but I mean, I was always nervous. It always made me nervous. I always got, you know, when it was staged, you, you go and, and before, just to get the nerves gone. And once you hit the stage, it's gone for two and a half hours. You're, you're, and that's okay. I don't mind being the lead then. I don't see why it was okay and easy in my mind. Mm -hmm. But TV mm -hmm. and film, it was a stomach nerves. And because uh, I didn't think I was very good at it when mm -hmm. I saw myself. Nice break. So I, I lost my train of thought. A friend of mine, this is off subject, a friend of mine is uh, unfortunately was diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's recently and we didn't know and now we're trying to deal with how to how do we handle that and how do we talk to her and mm -hmm. we don't know what to do. So, you know, mm -hmm. you immediately walk into a room now and I, I'm like, why, why am I here? And I forgot. And I go, oh, no, mm -hmm. you know, am I am I starting signs of losing your memory, old age. Mm -hmm. but, well, gee, I was going somewhere with that, and, I've, and now I'm gone. <laughs> uh, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil, he appears. All right, uh, so we want to switch this up for a quick minute, and we'll get back to acting. But um, we want to... Oh, sorry, that was a missing it. I didn't miss anything about it. I'm sorry, because really? the stomach was gone. Uh, in the, in the first six, seven years, I went back to Alabama and took care of my mother and my father. They were ailing. And my mom was saying things like, I think it's time to go. And I'm like, go where? What are you talking about? You know, go. I'm like, no. She was ready to go. And she she did go. Mm -hmm. But it was a great, great six years at home. I mean, I got to spend more time with my mom and dad than I I did when I was a child. Every day, wow. it was beautiful, beautiful. I, I, I miss them both. Uh, yeah, you, you are very fortunate. But very. Um, so yeah, we talked you about that. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, I, actually, I'll just tell you real quick what happened here because they have public bathhouses here in South Korea. So I went to this public. I had this routine like every Thursday, I'd go out for this certain soup, Baskin Robbins, and I'd go to this. Uh, public bathhouse so i got off work one of the public bathhouse i ate the food one of the public bathhouse logged on to facebook actually it was myspace at the time got 50 messages you <laughs> got to call home i literally am wearing like a gown and stuff so i have to go outside find a pc room call my dad and he's just like oh i got bad news for you your mom's dead uh, on her birthday <laughs> so that was pretty i i envy you so much for having that time uh Tell you. I like what I wouldn't give for just one more day, you know, not not I wouldn't need six years or six months, but just one more day to really express the appreciation I have for everything she did for me. And now it's like now now I'm a father and I totally understand the things that 
her concerns about me and my life and her love. Because, I, you know, the truth is that as a kid, the only thing you can really compare your, your love, the greatest amount of love would be to your mom. That's literally, I would say, like, my, my love for my mom was greater than all my family combined. But then you have a kid and you're like, oh, my God, the love that I feel for my mom would, like, occupy my daughter's pinky. You mm -hmm. know? So it just and it's just, it's the ironic thing because i want my daughter to know i i tell her i love her every day so many times just dozens of times and the, just the sad thing is that i know she is never going to understand that until another maybe 40 or 50 years later when she's a mom herself and then she'll understand uh my love for her you know but you know a transitioning is something i, I do want to ask you because i did see you lighting a menorah and right. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your, your wife's roots. And uh, I, I actually got to go into to, to Jerusalem and practice oh. Shabbat and, um, and Hanukkah uh, with the Jews there. It's an amazing experience. But, uh, yeah, can you, can you fill us in? Well, uh, she was told by her mother all her life that she's uh, a portion. She's got a father that was Jewish, never met him, never wow. met her father. So she knew there was that part, but then she thought the other half or whatever was uh, Filipino. Her whole life. Because her mother, Haji, kind of has a, an, an exotic look that she possibly could. Turned out ancestry again killed it all. Uh, they, she found out that she's uh, not Filipino at all. She's even more Jewish. And we both were of the mind that uh, we don't know. We're either agnostic. Mm -hmm. We, I believe there is a God. I just, I kind of want to believe it's, it's the same one that everyone worships. They just think it's theirs only. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I can't I, figure out anything else. So, mm -hmm. uh, we've been looking into it, and I actually was, I guess it was because, uh, well, wow, I don't have Indian in me. I'm just a, just a, just English. Darn. I mean, I, I, I love england because i've read it all my life i was shakespeare i could <laughs> shakespeare, memorize shakespeare. i memorized almost i almost did every one of the shakespeare's i mean i so loved it and the history and kings and i'm not interested in king and queens now because of <laughs> because of this fame thing and megan markle she's she's spewed it she horrible uh, horrible horrible uh, she's just ruined the whole kingdom i do want to interject on one thing Megan Markle was a, Megan Markle was the best thing to come out of the UK since the Rolling Stones. So that's all what? I want to say. But continue. what? Sorry, I, I'm taking it. I'm taking a dig at this guy. Ooh, <laughs> it's an inside joke. It's an inside joke. I'm, I'm, don't worry, Jeremy. I'm used to it, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I, love, I don't. I don't care for her because you're destroying thousands of years. I don't want to be any. I don't want to be princess. I, ugh, yes, but you want to use it to be fame. She just mm -hmm. wants to be famous. Anyway, I don't offer. Anyway, back to good things. Right. But anyway, what were we talking about? Yeah, that that was that that was a quite a big thing, as you can imagine, over here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this whole celebrity. I think um, she said in one of her interviews that she assumed that being part of the royal family was like being in a part of um, Hollywood, and she expected that kind of sort of uh, lifestyle when she, when she came over. Um, and obviously it was nothing like that. It was very sheltered. Um, there was a lot of security. Um, and again, freedom. She didn't have the freedoms that she had back at home. So right. you know, but there's a lot that. of uh, there's a lot of mixed opinions here about her. But I can kind of see whether you like her or dislike her, you can kind of see um, the kind of situation she was in in terms of, um, you know, losing some of her freedoms and, 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 and how unprepared she was for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to know really what, what went on. Um, Hey, good luck to them. They're happy now, whatever you know, they're doing. Cool. I guess it's just that they're, they're not, you ruined him. I think I don't know them. So, mm -hmm. and they're only an hour from us and I know where they live. So I can just, I'll go visit. <laughs> go say um, hi. <laughs> I'll say hi to me. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's this whole thing. I don't, I, I'm so sad that people want to be famous. It, 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 all values in life are gone. Just right, make right. me famous. I want Especially people reality to look TV, at me. right? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, reality TV. Yeah. How many years ago, I, 30, it started and destroyed right. society. I agree. We That's definitely agree me. there. 
the inside joke there was when I told uh, Gray that he's like, she's not even from the UK. And I'm like, that's the point. So, okay. Anyway, moving right along. How dare you throw away a duchy and then use it when you need to? I mean, there's responsibilities come. You had to know that you're marrying a king, maybe. Right. right. Or well, you yeah. have to do some things exactly. you don't like. Sorry. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah. So, how's your. So. Are, so now we're talking... in, we're embracing the whole Judaeus, the whole. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. we're learning about the traditions and. Mm -hmm. And soon uh, she'll possibly join a, a church. Well, not a church. A synagogue, synagogue. Synagogue. And maybe. Um, uh, did I show you my Star David tattoo? Yes. Uh, my mom and I, we got them on our, on our, on our, over our hearts. And she actually was buried like with a, a Jewish flag. And it's on her tombstone, which is like amazing. So she was like really big supporter and lover of, of Israel. So, uh, okay, well, getting back to this acting, we have a few more questions uh, to ask you here. And uh, by the way, just a uh, random thing, you got any plans for the weekend? No. No. Okay. And that's a good thing. That's good. Maybe get to the squid game. That'd be great. Yeah, All she right. keeps telling me, and how come you're not in it? I mean, you're doing stuff right. to try to get in that. Right, I'm working on it. But okay, here we go. This was. Um, yeah, so what do you think um what do you think makes a great actor? And 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 I think oh. I, I think I think what you said was, was interesting whenever you said if you've said it before. Um I will tell you this in in college uh I was taking this counseling class and the teacher gave me or sh she gave a couple of students an option uh to be the person who's getting role played. Uh, not that kind of role play, but you get role played and you get an automatic A. Okay, that was part of the assignment. You get an automatic A. And so, so you know, you get like this little dossier of the person. And this person I was doing had like a really hot temper, but he seemed to think everybody else was like the problem except him. So he, he was prone to have like these outbursts of anger. And so, that was like my character to a T. So as I was getting interviewed, I would occasionally blow up on some of these, on some of these students. And, and I had just a completely straight place and I would actually catch them off guard sometimes. And, but the thing is the people were amazed that I was able to play that character so well because it actually was me. So, you know, there's a difference between like a, 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 a character actor, which I believe which you would fall under. But then there's also people who just, as they say, they just play themselves, you know, uh, like a Brad Pitt or, uh, you know, will just, just play, play himself. Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Lopez, the reason why they, they, they're able, they, they, they don't have a lot of range because they're playing a character which is really similar to their own. So uh, what are your thoughts on that as far as um, character acting, uh, being like a typecast? You, you know, they, they call it a typecast. And, and how, do, how do people really just play the best roles that they can? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't know. Character. I, I guess I always looked at a character actor as just not that he's putting on some magnificent character more than anybody else. He's just mm -hmm. he's not the star. He comes in and he's part of the movie, part of the TV show. He, mm -hmm. but, uh, but acting, it always seems like the person that has more of their own self in it is usually the better actor. You know, they've mm -hmm. said it before. They've done this before. They, and the way I'm talking now, I mean, let's just write it down and say it. I've said these things before, so I should be able to make this conversation, right. even right. though I've memorized the lines. It should come mm -hmm. out just as easily. And some people, I think I do it a lot, are technical actors, and I, I, I'm ashamed of it. You, you do it, but it's not you don't know what's wrong. It's perfectly good. You'll watch it and you, 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 you something about it is, is off. And I think it's the technical part. They're doing it exactly as they think it should be done. And it's not naturally coming out of them. I mean, I do it all the time and I hate it or did. Well, actually, maybe it was, so I don't know. 
Here's a question I, I got for you. Because I know when actors, they're trying to decide whether or not they're going to do a role, they read it first, right? They'll just take the script and read through it. But it doesn't really seem like possible that someone can memorize all those lines. So do they have like cue cards in the background that they're reading from? Or like, what have you seen? Um, uh, Because it it does not seem, unless they're ad-libbing some of it, that they just can't like remember off the top. Uh, have you, did, did you ever see like ad libbing or things like that um, on set or? Well, Jim, or Jim, always, generally memorize it? Jim Carrey always ad libbed. I mean, it was, you, uh-huh. if you'd read the script, then you'd know, but uh, yeah, he's always doing it. And, but um, what was it? Well, let's go back. Um, I've lost the, the train of thought. Well, uh, do, do they, Oh, okay. I got it. Doesn't seem possible. See, it's all it took for you to go. It doesn't, seem pos- it doesn't seem possible that you can memorize all your parts in that, unless you're just like studying it all day or whatever. Well, they didn't have a problem with the Shakespeare. I mean, it, it scared out of my mind that I wouldn't be able to remember it. But uh, all of a sudden, it, one day, clicks and oh, it's in. Even now, I'll come up with a soliloquy and I don't know why it's still in there, but. Uh, I remember doing, a, I don't know if you remember, it's way back. It's Everything I do now is, you remember way back, Jake and the Fat Man. It was a big 90s show, cop show, and I had a, a scene with the lead, heavy set Conrad was his name. And he kept, like, looking over to the off my left shoulder, and I was, like, asking someone, he didn't want to say anything to him because he's a star. Why is he looking? He's not looking at me. I, I'm having a hard time connecting. And they said, "Look behind you." And, I looked at him and his <laughs> he had his cue card set up behind me, off to the side, so he would be reading it. And he told me later on that he didn't memorize it because it's there's the cue cards there. He was getting a little older, but you know, fifties, sixties. It's not that old. That's great. I said, "Okay." And there's that kind of thing can happen, but but that was nearly the only. Cue cards. See, I, feel, I, I, I feel really sorry for, I don't know about you guys, but you see um, the, so the usual soaps that are on every day, sort of five days a week. And, you know, they've been around for years. I, I, I don't know if yeah. you have those. Obviously in America, I don't, um, so much in, in South Korea, what, what soaps are like over there. But, you know, you have people that are in these Keep soaps. Coming. Obviously, they have breaks. Um, but they'll be in it for like 30 years. And... Mm-hmm the amount of lines that they must have to, I mean, it would fill me with horror to, to have <laughs> to work like that on a regular basis. Right. It's oh, nice. yeah. I can't I, imagine being the star of any show. Yeah. Regularly. I mean, and, um, and, and you know what, actually I saw a, I saw like, like a little short documentary on that about what you're talking about, the soap operas. By the way, do you know why they call them soap operas? Uh, yeah, because the something to do with the the ad was it the adverts the very first adverts they had, used to have soap adverts on or something exactly they Tied. because they're mostly advertising yeah to, to women and so they would be advertising uh, they have it like product place well, that and then yeah anyway but but it was talking about why. If you look at those plots, they're they're ridiculously repetitive. It's like okay, someone's always cheating on someone. It's like they're recycling the same stuff over and over and over again. And they said, "Oh yeah, one oh, of yeah. the reasons there's only seven the, plots." Hey, hey, it's in Christmas. Hollywood. It's it's Christmas. Someone's gonna die, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so 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 they said one of the reasons why they did that is because if they if they did anything super creative it would be way too difficult when you're trying to do this on, on a very short time frame, And so, um, really? yeah, huh. it, it was really, it was really interesting. Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, it was, I, it was, this was several years ago that I saw this, but, uh, great. You got another question? Yeah. Jeremy, um, can we talk about for those Star Trek fans out there, just a little bit about your experience filming? Um, obviously it's, it's a massive franchise. Um, and you, you must have been stoked to realize that you, you, you're going to get to work with the team. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences? 
Well, it was kind of like the same as a Christmas vacation was. Uh, we didn't audition prior to it. It was almost the day they were shooting. Like we're saying with Christmas vacation, next thing you know, I'm getting an agent call, run in and you got to go over to Warner Brothers and over to the set. They're taking you to a set. They're shooting and you're off to the side and you're, you're watching. And then Nicholas Meyer gets up and walks over to what, 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 what do we, Oh, the, uh, uh, Valtain character. He, oh, boom, you sit down and, you know, I'm sweating bullets. Like it's, you know, a few lines, but, uh, <laughs> you're desperate to want it. I guess I wanted fame. I guess I'm just as bad as everybody, but I never really did want fame. I, I always wanted to be just a character, the guest star, the person who comes in and leaves, doesn't have, have a good time and kill some people and get out. And they then, you know, I said the lines and he said, fine, he's good. I went, well, that's, that's, I like this job. And next thing you know, they're telling me tomorrow, you have to come in and say those lines. So, on the set that you grew up watching, right? Well, not really. <laughs> different, but. So, so was that, that one? Was Shatler and Lenoy? What's his name? I, I kind of like to forget that guy's Nimoy. name. Nimoy. <laughs> Nimrod. Were, were they on uh, that? Leonard Nimoy. Sorry, no, I, Sorry I didn't want to say that. Leonard <laughs> and Shatner. Uh, were they actually in that one? No, that would happen the next day or two. We uh, shot one. We they but it stopped. Was in that movie, though. That was in the Star Trek when I met them. Yeah, but then a couple of days later, I got to see them on the set. They weren't on. They didn't shoot. We didn't shoot anything together, if you know the movie. So uh, they were just there for photo shot to make yeah. sure their uniform and everything was correct. That he was a captain, and you know. And so you that was a... beautiful to see them. I mean, it was uh, like you... artwork. Did you also meet uh, Mark Hamill on the set? And what was her name? Carrie Fisher? Harrison, actually Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, he was on that too. Not Star Wars. <laughs> no, that was, uh, okay, I got you. Let the I farts be you. with you. Yeah, that was, uh, -R -R that was a punkin. You got punked. Okay. Um, all right, so I got another one. Um, I got another one. But Mark Hamill I did meet. With Roddy McDowell yeah. and Wing Commander. Really? Oh, that was great. He gave my little daughter a, a stuffed animal that he signed on it. It was, she didn't know who the hell he was, but it was thrilling to me. She still has that, that, that same little animal. Really? Well, she doesn't play with it anymore. She's 24. <laughs> but... <laughs> you, you, okay, so. I know, I know, we talked briefly about this, about some of the darker sides of Hollywood, and I do think that things are getting cleaned up, especially with the Me Too movement and some of the bigger guys going down when there's starting to be some accountability. But do, do, you, do, you, do you think that um, maybe, maybe just, just things being maybe more open, um, like, is that part of the problem, just when there's not enough uh, transparency or accountability that things, you know what I mean, that things can get pretty bad, that there can be a lot of abuse? So do, do, you, do, you, see, do you see, like, a direction where uh, in the future where it'll be a lot safer and maybe just uh, more equitable for people? Well, um, I, don't, I, I don't know about safer. I've never had that casting couch is the only thing I can think of. It was never been... Uh, a firearm that I was going to kill someone with. They've always saw the chamber empty. And I mean, and nobody's ever offered me sex to get it part. Darn it. But, uh, yeah. That might say something more about it. I avoided experience. all the evil, I guess, because I played evil. I avoided all the other backstage evil, uh, but the diversity, I don't, I, I always thought that, I mean, then maybe, there's something wrong with Hollywood in that they have a problem with people of color. I don't I hate to say that if it can make money, they don't care what color you are. Right. But I don't, I, I have a couple of projects that I'm going to try to send out and they're basically African-American based. I have no idea how to write it. I have the story. I have the treatment. I have what it's about. It's a good enough idea to do. And it would involve a lot of uh, black people, but I can't write it. So I would assume you would just need more writers 
are they out there? Are they are there African American writers that are just not getting their stuff done, or is it is it uh, racist? Or the Hollywood doesn't want to make a film about it? I don't know. I, it won't make money, you know, because money is the root of all most evil. Actually, yeah. speaking of tattoos, I got that tattoo. Timothy six eight. I got that tattooed on my arm here, but oh, okay. So, so so here's here's something that's interesting to my, maybe ask you because it seems like your average Joe Blow, like your key grips or your 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 you know your people. Okay, they they they're they're making a living, but if you they weren't paying these stars like recently. I, maybe it was Jennifer Lawrence. I don't want to misquote this, but she she, she had like a like a fifty million dollar deal, and then she like sued the studio because she was like, "Well, if you guys wouldn't have released this movie actually out into the public, or if you wouldn't have released it on a streaming service because of COVID," and no, it's not Jennifer Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. So she actually sued them. And she won against them for having to make like maybe like 10 or 20 million dollars more because that was a valid, I, I don't know, part of, you know, so it, it seems like some of these people are making ridiculous amounts of money. Like, I, okay, I understand, you know, you're worth what you're able to pull in, but some of these are just insane. You know what I mean? Like absolutely insanity. And so it seems like if they weren't paying these people on the top, so much the the people um the average joe blows and i know you know these guys who just what's what's the word for the lighting system that they use uh, i just uh, key one. grips uh... key grips and the sound um because what one what of the guys from uh squid games that we're interviewing that was doing that boom mic there's a, yeah there's just technical mm. term for it but uh do you have any thoughts on that like about maybe celebrities being overpaid um uh, or I never like had a problem with that because capitalism. I mean, didn't they just didn't they just give a some sporting guy who bounces a ball thirty five million dollars? I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't yeah. think that. I mean, yes, it's a talent, mm -hmm. but you're really just throwing a ball in a hole, yeah, you know, or you're throwing a, a, a sphere, another size ball to another guy. It's <laughs> it's not worthy of that money. Money unless they know they can make that money from people coming in to buy that football show or that basketball show or whatever. And every Terminator mm -hmm. should get that kind of money if they're going to make three hundred billion when they sell it to people in the theaters. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with that, but it, it's like you're, you're pushing a socialistic society. Then maybe <laughs> we should mm -hmm. all get fair pay, fair wages, and that's not the way America works. America is all right. land of the dream. You know, to screw anybody you can to get it to the top. I hate that thought, but <laughs> people. I'm not have a great opinion of people right now. I'm you sorry. you get a similar you get a similar opinion um, with people um, that they say things like you know why does this company um, not pay their cleaners more or why do them why don't they um, divide some of the some of the dividends out more equally to the company and a lot of people forget that if the government dictated what co companies paid, then the companies are so big, they just leave the country. So, and if they leave the country, then obviously it affects the economy. So there's always a bigger picture, isn't there? I guess, to mm -hmm. things like this. Yeah, but then the bigger picture to us, I, I, I assume us meaning regular people, uh, is that uh, that bigger picture lost train of thought. Boom. Um, Sorry, move on. God, it was good. Uh, <laughs> Someday it'll come. I, actually, Jeremy, uh, I do want to go back in history just for a second. Um, because that story that you told me about your mom, that sent chills up my spine uh, about your mom. Oh, 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 just think about it right now. Just sit goosebumps all over me. But that's that's a really powerful story. Your mom, your your mom was an unwed mother and your, her siblings were trying to take you from oh. her and she just bounced. She left in the middle of the night uh, and took you away from there. Um, 
and I told you this about my my mom as well. Uh, she was actually a Vietnam veteran as well, and uh, she she was a single mother. So I know that that was a bit of a struggle. But do you have any like? Do you have any? Um, this is actually Gray's question. I'm actually stealing it from him. But do you have any? Oh, you want to take it over, Gray? Because that was the question you. No, you can You have. You you're there. Go for it. Okay. Do, do oh, wait, you, wait. The bigger yeah. picture that uh, Earl uh, was that. What they end up doing is just allowing the rich to never pay taxes. Mm. And then it kills the whole thing. They never have to pay any taxes, yet they're coming after me for uh, $800 because they know they can get it. They know they can get it, but they can't get it from the rich because the government has set it up so that they don't ever have to pay. And I just want to choke somebody. Anyway, back to the... Yeah, well, actually, we Red wanted to know, Gray. Uh, I'll just read you the the quote from him. Uh, but actually, if you if you want, if there's anything else you want to tell us about that, like uh, if you have like any fond memories of growing up, or anything like that, that um, that uh, maybe it's really expected you stood to your um, parents to get for a living, or any childhood memories about living uh, growing up. I, I I will share one personally real quick. Because this wind up really influencing me in my life, but uh, my mom was obsessed with China, so whenever there was like a birthday or holiday, she would always take us to like a Chinese, really nice Chinese restaurant. Had these terracotta uh, soldiers, and so now I've lived in Asia for ten years, and that's something that really stuck in my mind. Uh, this love for Asia and movies and music and things like that, and then another time. Uh, I asked her about Hanukkah and she's like, well, if you really want to know about Hanukkah, like I'm going to take you to the synagogue. So we went to, you know, we celebrated Hanukkah. It was so amazing to see the dancing and the food and the celebration. And it really stuck with me till this day. That's one of those things uh, when I'm getting ready to die, those would be like the last thoughts going through my mind. So uh, do you have anything you can share with us? Me? Yeah. You're, you're, you're the star here. Oh, <laughs> funny you're star. That's another thing. Star and icon. Relatively speaking, throw that word around. Everybody's a star now. I mean, uh, I grew up with the John Waynes, the Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburns. They're stars, <laughs> not just the Kardashian, Kardashian spawn. I, uh, anyway, <laughs> but my mom. Now I'll always remember that she she would wake me up even at midnight. And I might have been six, five in there, eight years old. Every, every uh, Saturday night, I think it was the midnight movie, a mil million dollar movie. And she'd wake me up to have a company with, because she hadn't wasn't married to my dad, my stepdad yet. And it would be some famous old movie with the, with the big stars in it. I, I, that's what indoctrinated me into it. And I didn't know I would be one of them. Didn't even think of being one of them. Mm. It was just... It was the best time I got to get up and watch this movie that had these Ooh. stars, icons in it, and it uh, chills. And then, and uh, you it stayed with me, me, stayed with me till I was meeting them at that golf club, uh, and it was just I was lucky to get this. And next thing you know, boom, I'm I'm in it, and I'm getting to talk to them, and it was a Beautiful dream come true. And and I always remember, I'll throw in that, that dream I had regularly when I was a teenager that showed that I was going to end up going to ACT. It was a duplicate. Mm. Like they filmed me going up the stairs into that room in San Francisco where I got the first apartment there before I started. And I put my bags down. I told the story many times because I don't know what it is. How was I? How would I know that I was going to be sitting in there, you know, 30 years earlier on a dreams that just wow. keep coming up. Did God just say, Hey, you're going to be an actor. And this is this little, little hint of it, but we don't know how, and you're just have to live life and you'll get there someday. I don't know what it was. How, wow. can, how can that be possible? It's impossible for right. me to have had that dream. I, and actually, so, Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. So it's, well, does that mean there's a God or, or are we yeah. just on a loop on life? It just goes over and over and you're just repeating it. You, you think you know I believe in God? You know, it's amazing. Actually, Adam and I, we interviewed these, this Scottish rapper who got rejected by the UK industry. 
and he uh he wind up faking like he was from california and the, him and his partner wind up gaming the the uk music industry wind up getting signed to sony and opening up for eminem really crazy crazy story, crazy, crazy, crazy crazy it is literally the craziest story i have ever heard in my life but he told us that he actually had a dream about meeting his partner and about their first show and and he told him later on like dude i saw this exact show in a dream so that is that is freaking crazy and i, I think that is such a beautiful story of sharing about your mother i really want to thank you for that so uh i was a little bit iffy about stealing adam's question uh gray's question here but uh yeah thank you for that uh gray i think i have time for like one or one or two hey, that, more. that leads <laughs> that leads us really nicely on to um you know a little bit about christmas jeremy what are your plans over christmas and you know do you go as far as having a five-year plan what what's in the pipeline for you well christmas this year is, is huh, i don't want to be a bummer it's just we spent four years watching cnn and msnbc mm -hmm. and, and wanting to move to new zealand every day mm -hmm. i'm still thinking of that if, if it goes like i hope it doesn't but uh um, Christmas, I'm trying to find the spirit because, you know, you, all your life you do Christmas because of you're forced to go to church and that's what it's about. But, uh, but it was about toys and we, we, we did Christmases out the wazoo every year, just piles of stuff and, and made the whole house a, a light show. It was it's beautiful. And this year I'm not feeling it. Mm. So I'm starting to put up I'll put a bulb on something or I'll hang it. Down. I'm trying to, I'll watch a Christmas vacation or something. Uh, Bishop's <laughs> wife, give me a Christmas movie. Love actually. I hate to say that because people hate that. movie. I don't know why. Notebook. I love that movie. Watch, watch anyway, your notebook. notebook. That's a fantastic movie. It's incredible. I, I mean, I've seen it a hundred times and you can see it and cry and laugh at the same place. And Bill Nye is, is genius. Every year guaranteed. Every year yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, this is a this is kind of a random question here, but if Gray was going to get compared to any celebrity, alive or dead, um, who would you compare him to? Look at the face. Let's see if you can see it. Usually, I'm really good at this, and that's what my wife hates. Just shut up. Just watch the movie. <laughs> oh God, I know there's somebody. I just don't know if I can get his name. He's got a little John Goodman. Getting thinner. He's, uh, <laughs> he's doing a. I know there's a. Yeah. Guy. Let's get the, oh, who do you think? Who are you looking oh, at? I want to see if you can get it, man. You're you're, you're the you're the guy. You may, maybe you've met him. I should be able to uh, cast okay, him. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's say he froze to death in an ocean once. No. Uh, okay. Froze? Um, he froze to death. In Is an that ocean. DiCaprio? DiCaprio. There we go. Oh, I see. I see it in the uh, not the beard, but there he is. Yeah, there, yeah. You, go. there you go. I'm putting the hand right. over your face so I can, you know, so you can see, I can see where All I right. do this. So I can see who you are. It's hard so, to figure uh, out yeah. these cameras. Yeah. I never understood that in when I'm shooting. I'm in the movie. I'm in the movie business. Hey, so that, I, I don't understand I must... how you shoot left and then you're right. He's laying right. down. How do you gotta you gotta turn the camera? I, I must say that's that's the nicest that's the nicest way that um, Diesel has ever um, had that conversation. Usually, yeah. it's um, if 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 a celebrity was dragged down a back alley and yeah, beat up, battered, set on and, fire, and, and, and yeah, set on fire and murdered um, and left at fifty thousand McDonald's weeks. burgers. Um, who would who would Earl Grey be? <laughs> I saw him recently. He's doing a movie at. Uh, Something at the end of the world is called DiCaprio, and he's gained weight. So I think that's what threw me, because I see um, him now as a, as a fat. He, had, he he really got heavy. That's I another thing I couldn't do. He, he's getting ready to play um, Jim Jones, actually, uh, which should be really interesting. Jim wow. Jones, the yeah, the, the cult leader. Um, uh, you should just so, get Trump to play him. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> So, I hope you don't mind. Um, I hope you don't mind doing a little name drop. But who's someone you could call up tomorrow and just say, "Let's go out for a beer"? Uh, that we might know. 
Oh, I don't know. I guess. Oh. Oh, uh, I guess. What's his name? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't call him much. No, I, I don't really know anyone that I would do that to. But All I've right. had that opportunity my whole life, and my wife has said, why aren't you that kind of guy? I can't do it. I mean, I did 20 on Jump Street, and it, we played pool after after shooting all the time, and and it became like he, was, he wanted to be a good friend, you know. With Depp? You're talking about yeah. Depp? And he wow. was Johnny giving Depp. me phone number. He said, call me. We'd get together in L.A., and I was just too shy. I just oh can't do God. that. I'm not that kind of person, so I never did. And then, of course, I'm going, man, I would have been in every one of those pirate movies. What an idiot. I still didn't <laughs> call him. I don't. I, I just can't do that. Uh, I'm not going to call him. Uh, do you guys ever see Bosch? You ever hear of it? It's a TV show, Bosch. Well, then uh, I'd call him, but you don't know him. <laughs> Uh, Robert England. Uh, oh, I could call Robert England and we could go out. That's right. You're kidding me. Wait, wait. Freddy Krueger. Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Krueger. Freddy Krueger. Okay. All also, right. Ray Wise. I forgot. Ray Wise, he played, uh, he was in the first Swamp Thing. He was okay. in Reaper. He's been in every, He's you know his face. All right. But yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Randolph. All right, Gray, you got a last question and we're going to. Well, we, we didn't quite cover um, Jeremy's, uh, what's in the pipeline? What What's happening? Oh. Well, I, I decided to go back. I mean, fishing and sitting on the rocking chair, just I've seen enough TV and maybe it's that year or two, you know, in, in, inside, mm -hmm. but I decided to go back, deal with the nerves, <clears throat> see if there's any interest in, you know, this at 67. And um, maybe this time I'll, I'll try to be a star. You know, I, I, I did. I wanted to be a guest star before and I got it. Just a character actor. Now, let's see if I can uh, be huge. Hey, it yeah, happened I, to I, Jeffrey Giuliano on Squid Game. I mean, he's about your age, and he's he's been happy with his lot. Um, and obviously, Squid Game has just completely blown his career out of the water. So, right. now see, yeah. I don't remember. Any, I don't. I haven't seen it. But is there an old person in that? They all look yeah, thirty. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. So so, so we actually interviewed four of these guys, the, the VIPs, and, and Gray's exactly right. The guy's actually 68 years old, and he's been like a character actor, actually just like he. If you look at his website, he has all these different characters that he's done. Some What's his name? Some of it, Jeffrey Giuliano. He's actually written like something like 30 books. He's actually written like 20 books on the Beatles, man. It's really, wow. really, he's written the most books in the history about the Beatles. So it, it's insane how many books he's written on them. But anyway, the point being is that he's been grinding his, his way his whole life. And then just kind of out of the blue squid game came out and nobody saw what, what happened because it, it quickly, like very, very, very quickly within, we're talking about a month became the most streamed show on Netflix, which is, ridiculous you know so he's like hmm. he never would have thought that he would have gotten his break at 68 years old so i think uh gray does have some good ideas there i would definitely like to see you if you're talking about this time around to to see uh, more confidence because you're definitely talented uh you know you uh you're, you're and you're also just uh, you know an all-around good guy talking to you i really enjoy talking to you uh... obviously a family guy here got a little Oh, it's your daughter here. Um, you look like Satan, like a Satanist right here. All right. Uh, and so, yeah, we definitely. She like took to that, that really well. Did I tell you that? She took that so well. She she even said daddy when she saw me hanging on from the rafters in this <laughs> demon thing. Yeah, daddy. Yeah. You know what's amazing? A, a few Chris, maybe about two Christmas ago, I went into my daughter's uh, preschool dressed as Santa Claus. <laughs> I got to show you this picture because. <laughs> My daughter just absolutely <laughs> lost it. I mean, she was terrified by this. And even when I took off the beard, I mean, she was, and all the kids were perfectly okay with me. But uh, I'm going to find this picture. It's absolutely hysterical because uh, she just lost it. I mean, she absolutely lost it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you can have to. No, but it's, 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 been, it's been great to, to meet you, Jeremy. As I said, I did. 
Wow. Um, I did watch the other podcast, obviously seen lots of your movies as well. Um, mm -hmm. The mask being, obviously, I'm in my 30s, so, you know, it's our era. Um, so, yeah, great movie. Um, yeah, good good, uh, good to meet you, mate. That was a nice thing about this this experience of podcasts. I, uh, when I was working and uh, you get recognized 30 years ago and all, this wasn't about. There was none of this, and the interviews were not on Zoom. And, da -da -da, and I'd never, so this is the first to me, and it's pretty amazing that you go on and do it as Star Trek mainly, and people, <laughs> they go to IMDb and they go, My God, I've seen you in every show when I was a kid. You know, mm -hmm. showing That's my age now, but like that really feels good. Then feels really good. Then you were actually in X Files because that like was my favorite show growing up. Right. Yeah. Great show. Everyone loved the X Files. That was huge when that came out in the nineties. It was massive, absolutely massive in the UK. Can like next year, that? I think there's a. I got a, somebody calling, well, telling me I, about a, a, a Comic Con ish in in uh, Hartford. Or something shyer. Now, yeah, I'll get it. Can you guys see that? Oh yeah, you're Man, jolly. That's oh, scary. I can see, I can see <laughs> why. Yeah. It, it was one of your weight loss times. years. I can see why yeah. she lost him. <laughs> it didn't matter after I pulled her down and was talking to her. She just, I mean, she was not having it at all. So. It's not my uh, bad. Can you tell us uh, how we can find you online, Jeremy? Actually, I'll put it uh, just Google Jeremy Roberts. I am lucky enough to be the one that comes up when they say my name. Although when they say Errol Gray, what comes up first for you? Well, tea. loads of tea bags will come up, mate. <laughs> tea bags. Um, Waitrose, Waitrose, Tesco's will probably pop up first. <laughs> well, in the UK, it would anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I'm and hoping to be there next year. To be where? Cool. At a signing comes in, the UK. Uh, in England, oh, the UK. Yeah, that, that, Whereabouts? That's why I couldn't, I can't put the word together. It's Hertfordshire or work. It's a, my wife Hertfordshire. knows she does that. Hertfordshire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and actually, um, this is taking a bit longer, but I have been working on your wiki page. Oh, it's but, incredible that you're doing this. That's very nice because. Yeah, I think you're great. That's phenomenal. Uh, but the, I mean, good God trying to add all your stuff in there manually for all the stuff you've done and link everything up is taking a long time. So it's, it's almost done. Uh, because I did not realize how much stuff you've been. In. It's like almost 200 credits. So you looked on the, on the IMDB and it's like this long, literally. So, uh, but you also have a fan page on Facebook. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Jeremy Roberts official, I think. Yeah. So my we'll, wife, we'll... she does all the, all this part, you know, the, the mm -hmm. all this, you know, I, I'm I'm useless. Like I said, I had a flip phone till last year. So. Flip phone, wow. <laughs> but I'm coming up to the. I'm coming up. I'm 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 becoming very savvy. E. All right. I know how to fix a computer. Have you turned it off yet? Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah. So Have we are. We, we're, we will be sending out another Starbucks card, and we're making another donation to this single mothers. Um, organization here that uh, we just recently started supporting because one of the VIPs from the Squid Game was telling, ta telling us about what it was like for him growing up a, as a single um, with a single mother and that story I got to tell you it's really touching I, d I do want to end off on this because Christians very frequently you can get a bad rep for being very, um, very hateful. And <laughs> that's funny. One of the, it, it shouldn't be. I know. I know. But one of the things that just blows me away the most is whenever they disown their, their, their kids because they've either deconverted or they're gay or trans or whatever. And, and just today I was, I had another interview with another atheist guy and I'm like, dude, I'm like, if my daughter, if I found out my daughter was a serial killer, like I would be helping her hide the bodies. Like, no, not, that's an exaggeration. But I'm like, if my daughter was killing me in my last breath, I would tell her I loved her. You know, so that's how much I, I, I can't even imagine a scenario that my daughter could do anything that would cause me to love her less. So any anybody who's seen their religion, 
as an excuse to disown or, or and even take the kids out of the equation for a second, but anybody like that, it's just really, it's really inappropriate and really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's what we're actively fighting against on this channel, uh, me being a Christian and I don't being an atheist. And it, it's a world that we want to w work forward to. And this is, this is a goal that, you know, we don't have to agree to, we, we can agree to agree, agree to disagree on some things, but as long as we're sitting here, uh, you know, being respectfully talking and uh, we're moving, we're winning either way. So uh, do you have any last thoughts you want to say, Jeremy, before we close up? No, it's been a good time as usual. Yeah. And I saw yeah. you have a moxie up there, Gray. You have a cat. I have one just like it. This is Bear. I have one of those. It's, her name is Moxie. You got okay. just like her. A little more orange in it. We got five. Wow. My wife and I, we <laughs> like to rescue animals. So rescue and we foster. And we're, we have five cats right now and we're trying to get a dog. Every day she's on there. Look at this beautiful picture of this dog and someone just going to throw him in the trash. Can we? No. I can't take another <laughs> animal. But I love them. I love them. I think I love them more than people. Mm, sad. Yeah. People are uh, disappointing just one, me lately. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. And one one quick thing, um, Randolph is saying something about he wrote an article about the nine types of love. Uh, if yeah, if you could link that and put that in the description, that'd be great. And so we do want to play this last video here, and then we're going to be ending this podcast. So thanks again. Uh, you can check us out at www.rgpodcast.com. Check us out at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. YouTube, Spotify, just about everywhere you could possibly find someone, you can find us. And so uh, we definitely thank you for joining us. This this one was our first live, so I'm still learning this stuff a little bit more. And we definitely look forward to having some more uh, live shows in the future. So stick around till this, uh, this last video goes out, please. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back again. Goodbye. Okay.